The most obvious things that set bespoke tailoring apart from normal ready-to-wear suits are the hand cutting and the hand sewing. The way that a tailor makes the panels of material to sit around the body and then they're all meticulously sewn together by hand. But also important is the pressing, the way that an iron is used and the heat, the pressure, the steam to affect that material to stretch some areas and to shrink others and create a three-dimensional suit. This is also something that doesn't get talked about as much and that a ready-to-wear factory doesn't really ever do to the same degree. So in this video, supported by the Campaign for Wool, which is significant because wool is so much easier to manipulate in these kind of ways, we're going to talk about three examples of this kind of work with the help of Nick Diaf of Dijon Skinner on Savile Row. Hi Nick, thanks right. for having us today. Not a problem at all. Um, so we're going to show three different techniques and the way that ironwork is used um, on bespoke tailoring to create different practical effects. What's the first one we're looking at here? This is a shoulder seam. Okay. So on the back part of the shoulder, there is additional fabric added mm -hmm. to allow for movement when the garment is complete. Um, it can be anything from an inch to half an inch and it's fabric dependent. Okay. Um, the front shoulder, is dictated by the measure that we want it to finish to. Yeah. And then the additional cloth is, as I say, added to the back and then shrunk away um, okay. to keep that extra cloth there. So this is the front panel of the jacket. That's this is right. the back. They're joining across the shoulder, but you want more space, more fullness across the top of the That's back. That's right. But you don't want all this wrinkling across the shoulder seam. Exactly. So you're going to use the iron to shrink this section down so it's smooth across the top of the shoulder. That's right. Okay. It'll look like a flat seam then. Fantastic. All oh, right. Come on, let's see that being done then. So this is afterwards, and now you can see it's been shrunk away and those seams are sitting much more nicely. That's right. So these two points are marrying up as they should have done from when we did our pattern work. Yeah. Um, everything's come together. Okay, yeah. So you lost that. Those sort of wrinkles on the back of That's the right. pattern have gone. Well, you can still see the excess cloth is here. Mm. And we've kept that. That's going to be our fixed shoulder seam measure. Yeah. And this is then adapting to that. Mm. And we'll add all that fullness and... Uh, comfort yeah. through your shoulders. So this is much more the smooth transition here between the front and the back, but you've got more material right. naturally on the back to the deal back. with your blades and the, the back of someone. Exactly. And there's a natural also kind of curve and stretch to that shape as well. That's right. The back, okay. as you say, is bigger than the front, mm. but we need them both to marry together yeah. and give you some comfort and mm. movement okay. in your coat. Yeah, that's really easy to see actually now. They, they, they seem they much right, more yes. easily and together. And it naturally takes that shape because this is wool it's got a little bit more giving there. Yeah, um, and it yeah so what would you do with another material if it was cotton or linen? Cotton is a little bit more difficult because it, you can't shrink too much of it away. Mm. So we would put probably half the amount that we put in here. Okay. Um, so you just, linens have less, so you just have less space over just the back? Just less, less fabric in there. Okay. Um, it's a closer, tighter fabric anyway, cotton. Yeah. So there's less giving it. Okay, great, thanks. So now let's go and just look at it on a finished jacket and see how that effect works. Sure. So now we're on uh, an almost finished jacket and you can see how smooth that transition is from the back to the front, even though the back is that yes, much bigger. that's right. And nothing's been disturbed. It's not been pulled about. You can see by this one because it's got the checks in there. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. But it's still hanging straight. Um, but there is, this excess is here. Yeah. And it will give you comfort and yeah. movement in the coat. I mean, it's interesting. If, if, if I looked at a finished jacket like that, I wouldn't guess that that section that was, was bigger, bigger than the yeah. front because the transition is so smooth. Yes. But actually, I know now there's an extra f inch of fullness in that That's width right, yes. There. And it is, it throws it all onto this area here. So mm. it gives you the movement to be able to eat, drink, whatever you want to do. <laughs> okay, nice. Wonderful. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Now, the second example we're looking at is the collar canvas and shaping that around the neck, sure. correct? That's right. So we've got, what, three stages here. That That's before any work has been done on it. That's and then it, we've yes. got the pad stitching and then the iron work. That's it. So this is how we'd cut this in the trimming room. Um, as I say, you've got the canvas, which is on the bias, which means it's across the piece, as is the melting. Mm -hmm. um, these two parts are then, this is machined here, and joined together and starts life 
like this. Mm -hmm. It's cut to a shape. Uh, the padding's then done, which will then put some natural roll into the collar. Yeah. And then from there, on the brake line here, uh, and the crease edge, that will then be folded there, and then this is all stretched on your leaf edge to, to help shape it start it around coming the, round. Around yes, the neck. that's it, around the back of the coat. Okay. And this is the neck part. So here you put in the pad stitching by hand, which is then, which is giving a little bit of this kind of rolled that's shape. Right. It so just it starts, starts to get process. some shape um, rather than it being totally flat. But actually, the, I mean, the out. difference from from that shape to this is extreme. I mean, it's going to it's so yes, that's real right. curve to it coming round. But when you see that. That looks so much more natural, like the shape of that's actually right. Yeah, so it's going to sit neck, around right? someone, as you say, someone's neck. Yeah. See, these are excess, and depends what we're doing with the lapel and stuff. Mm. But that's your basic shape, and then that's going to sit at the back of your. Neck. Okay. And again, you've got natural stretch in that for being right. bias as well. Exactly. Anyway. Okay. So that, All right. that helps us with the iron to be able to manipulate it and do what we need to do with it. Okay. Well, let's see how that's done then. From turning from that sure. and using the iron Into to get that to that one. stage, then yeah. Okay. Now we can see that canvas has been shaped and it looks much more like the example we had from before. That's right. So, yeah, it's got the shape we want. Um, this is nice and close around your neck. It's one of the reasons that the collar is going to stay close to your shirt collar. Um, obviously, there's other things as well with cut and things like that, but that is a, the shape we're looking for. It's, it's smaller there and bigger mm. here. And would that kind of shape ever drop out? over time if you tried to shape it? Or not? Uh, no, not really. We sometimes add stitches along here. This one has actually got one which we put in already. But okay. Sometimes we do it afterwards if we want it a little bit closer. There is ways we can manipulate it to keep it nice and tight, but certainly this leaf edge will stay as we've shaped it here. Okay. Obviously it will get reduced down and cut once it's on the coat. Sure. To okay. Not be quite so big, but uh, yeah, that's the latest. That stage. shape stays in place then? Yes. Yeah. So our second example is on a trouser leg. Yes. And we're going to show how you put a slight sort of S shape into it, correct? That's right, which is naturally what's needed for pretty much every pair of trousers. So okay. This being the front, this will be your knee. So this will need shrinking here. It's naturally then show, it starts to show that the calf will need stretching. And then we will shrink it through the thigh here to sit underneath your seat a little easier. Obviously there is shape in these seams, but with the iron we can help it with okay. the uh, cloth a little bit more of natural shape. Okay, so it's so this is this is before and it starts out as pretty much straight. Pretty much a straight line, yes. But you shrink and it and, and expand it so you have more room over the back of the calf. That's right. So less room in the back of the thigh. That's it. Okay. And then you want a little bit smaller over the knee as well. Great. Okay. Well, let's go to the vacuum and then like, sure. see that being done. Okay. Now we've got one leg before and we've got with a shape afterwards and you can really see the shape that's been put in the thigh then the calf as well, can't you? That's right. So it's just taken that away. And again, it's nice over the knee 
but it keeps it nice and close and that's what starts to throw some of that shape over to the calf as mm. well. And the thing that always strikes me about this is you see someone wearing the trouser, it doesn't look S-shaped at all. It looks like it has no, perfectly straight. that's right, because someone's that leg shape is shaped anyway. No one's got a straight leg, so, yeah, there's shape in the leg. So it takes all that, mm. puts it in the places it needs to be. And I guess if you have a more extreme physique with particularly big calves or you do particular exercise, then you have to do more of that work as well. That's right, yeah. Certainly calves, if someone walks or cycles a lot, if someone does a lot of power lifting, you'll find they have a bigger thigh. So, yeah, you adapt that accordingly. It's not just about putting extra pleats in or anything like that in the front to do that. We can okay. also shape and give you extra cloth where you do need it. Okay. And the same thing goes, it's much easier to do with wool as well like this to kind of yes, more shape definitely. than otherwise. Cotton or something like that can't be stretched. It's certainly the two of the extremes that you can with wool without disturbing the fabric. Okay, great. So that's, well, so that's three examples we've shown of different types of ironwork. I think now let's have a quick look at a sort of final suit. We can go through all the different places Sure. Just a few other kind of quick examples. Pretty much any time an iron goes near a garment, it's doing something, it's, it's not a waste of time. So it's done, <laughs> it's done for a reason. Okay. We've done a demonstration of three particular areas, but as you said, there's a dozen or more different places around even a jacket that you do work. So what other kind of places you'd use an iron? Um, certainly the chest to help try and get some of the prominence of the chest in there. Obviously there's darts and the internal work for that, but something like this ham helps us shape the actual garment over so it, it with more the steam. more three-dimensional kind of shape to it, more curved to that. Okay. That's right, with the steam and stuff like that. Yeah. Obviously, similar to the shoulders, there's fullness in all of this sleeve head around here, uh, yeah. um, which is small amounts are added and then pressed away. Again, it gives you the room to move in a coat. Because you've, you've, got got you've got a big sleeve head and a small armhole. That's right. You're trying, right. To, shrink one you're into trying the to get other. the one into the other. Yeah. Um, okay. Again, it's dependent on the fabric, how much you can get in there um, okay. and things like that. But... Yes, there's always excess in there to do that. And pretty much any seam along here, because there's inlays and stuff, we have to sort of stretch the inlays and manipulate them to lay them flat. Uh, okay. So they're not sitting there and it's not making things tight and stuff like that. So you get that in the sleeve, side seam, depending on how much suppression, possibly in the back seam as well. Okay. Yeah, because we, we've been thinking about the outside of the jacket so far, but the inlay of the material inside, you're having to shape and curve, so it's not a different shape to what you've got on the outside. That's right, right because obviously we do leave inlays in there. There's inches in there that we can make these coats bigger, which yeah. is part of what we do, but obviously we've got to keep that in there and it not dictate how the rest of the coat looks right. at the okay. stage when it's not being used. Yeah. And then on the, on the, the back, you were saying how... <coughs> so on the... On here, sometimes, if particularly, I think you said maybe if there's like a one piece back or something, you want to create your sort of shrink away to give a bit. That's more shape right. Yeah, you can do it. You can have them without a back seam. Um, you can put darts in there, but again, with a, certainly with a heavier material, you can manipulate and stretch for the round of the back and into the small of the right. back. Okay. Yeah, because I think that's quite an interesting visual thing to think of someone. Someone can picture you've got somewhere the big seat and big blades. And you think about cutting the material perfectly, but actually if you can shrink it away as well. That's it right, it certainly helps powerful. it, yes. Yeah, this seam is shaped, but with an iron we can help that shape hmm. stay where it needs to be and sit flat as well and sit nicely and flat on the customer as well. Fantastic. Great. Okay, fascinating. No Thank problem. you very much, Nick. Thanks for your time. No worries at all. Cheers. Thank you.